Hi students, in this lecture, we are going to learn superposition of sound waves. So in that first we focus coherent sources. So first understand what is the meaning of coherent sources. Let us see what is that. Let us consider two sound sources. Let us say S1 and S2. Or you can say these are two sound speakers from where sound is coming out. And consider one point. You can take somewhere here. A point P here. Now sound is reaching from S1 to point P and from S1 to P. Let us consider from S1 to P distance equal to X1. From S2 to P distance equal to X2. Then what we can do is phase of first sound view phase of first sound view at point P is written as, let us take it as a phi 1, phi 1 is equal to omega t minus kx1 plus alpha 1. This is a phase of the sound at point P, okay, because of first sound. In the same way, phase of the second sound at point P. It is a phi 2, phi 2 equal to omega t minus kx2 plus alpha. Okay. Now phase difference. Phase difference at point P is given by this can be written as it is a delta of phi, which is nothing but phi 1 difference phi 2. Okay then this will be k into delta x. I'm simply writing delta x. That means it may be x1 minus x2 or x2 minus x1. Okay, which one is more? k into delta x1, sorry, delta x plus you can say alpha 1 difference alpha 2. Take it as alpha. So here alpha is alpha 1 difference alpha 2. Okay, this is now phase difference. Now, any to any sources, sources which maintain constant phase difference, then they are called coherent. In this, we can see alpha is a constant, delta x is also constant, and k also constant. That means phase difference between these two sources is a constant. Okay. That means one basic condition to maintain constant phase is frequencies must be same. Here you can see omega, omega. So both have same frequencies. So condition for coherent sources. Coherent sources must have same frequency. Okay. Right. Now understand what is the value of alpha. Suppose when S1 sending out compression, if S2 also sends out compression, means S1 giving compression, S2 also giving compression at same time. Or you can say S1 giving rarefaction at same time, S2 also giving rarefaction. Then we say, the sources are in phase. I am writing here. The sources are in phase. Means both are giving compressions or both are giving rarefactions at same time in phase. Then alpha will be zero. Okay. Suppose 
when S1 is giving compression, S2 is giving rare fraction. Get the point. When compression comes out here, here rare fraction comes out. Then we say sources are out of phase. I am writing here. Sources are out of phase. So out of phase. In that case, phase value means alpha value, it is a pi. Okay. Now coming to here. At point P, compression of S1, compression of S2. If compression falls on compression, or you can say a rare fraction falling on rare fraction, then intensity of sound at point P is maximum. That is what we call constructive interference. Okay. And for that condition is phase difference should be equal to 2 n pi. I am writing here. Condition. Condition for constructive interference is delta phi should be equal to it is equal to 2n phi where n equal to 1, 2, 3 and so on. Right? Or you can take starting from 0 also. 0, 1, 2 and so on. Right? That means 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi and so on. Okay? Right. And next condition for condition for destructive interference that is delta phi equal to 2n minus 1 into pi again n equal to it is same n equal to that means n equal to 1 it is a pi n equal to 2, 3 pi and so on. That means they are out of phase. That means when compression comes from S1, here rare fraction comes. So when compression falls on rare fraction, they are out of phase. It will be destructive to interference. Okay. So same thing we can write in terms of a path difference. Here you can see delta x. Delta x is known as a path difference. Okay. So when alpha is 0, directly we can take delta x is a path difference. If alpha is not 0, suppose alpha is a pi, we are knowing that lambda corresponds to 2 pi phase then pi corresponds to lambda by 2. In that case, path difference becomes delta x plus lambda by 2. Okay. I am writing here. The same condition in terms of path. Delta x plus if there is no, means initially sources are in phase, then alpha becomes 0. Corresponding path difference becomes 0 equal to it is n lambda. So this is what we call path difference. Okay. Path difference delta x that is x1 difference x2. If sources are in phase, we are taking their 0. If sources are out of phase, it should be delta x plus lambda by 2 that is equal to n lambda. Here we can take either plus lambda by 2 or we can take minus lambda by 2. In both cases we get same answer. Right? So in the same way we can write condition for destructive interference. The only change is in the place of n lambda right in 2n minus 1 into lambda by 2. Okay. Now understand these things by solving problems. Let us see first question. Before that, see once the points.
So sources which maintain constant phase difference are called covalent sources. For covalent sources, frequencies are the same. So they must be same, okay? Right. And condition for aspect to interference, path difference, n lambda, in terms of phase, writing in the place of lambda 2 pi, because lambda corresponds to 2 pi phase, right? Next, condition for is distract to interference, path difference, 2n minus 1 into lambda by 2, coming to phase, in the place of lambda by 2, lambda corresponds to 2 pi phase, lambda by 2 corresponds to 5 phase, okay? Right, now see problem. So this question is taken from H.C. Verma. See what is given. A source of sound S yes, and a detector D are placed at some distance from one another at some distance. A big cardboard is placed near the detector and perpendicular to the line SD as shown. It is kept normal to the line SD. It is gradually moved away and it is found that the intensity changes from maximum to minimum as a board is moved through a distance of 20 centimeter. So when we are moving the board, intensity is changing from maximum to minimum, right? Find frequency of a sound emitted. And given velocity of a sound in the air is 330 meter per second, right? So here we have to focus that sound coming directly from yes, reaching detector and some part of the sound directly goes to the cardboard, reflects there and comes back. This reflecting one and this directly coming one, they superimpose. Then we get intensity, it may be maximum or it may be minimum. Now in this you are given initially maximum, finally it becomes minimum, right? See how we solve this problem. First, we have taken a line source detector. Now, somewhere here having the cardboard. Right. Now we can see sound reaching directly. Next, sound going to the cardboard reflects there and comes back. This reflecting sound and direct sound, they superimpose. So initially it, it was, you can see initially path difference. Difference is equal to N lambda. Okay. Because condition given that intensity changing maximum to minimum, right? Therefore, initially part difference was N lambda. That means, or to make it understand, I am taking S2D distance as X1. Right? D2 cardboard, take it as X2. Then path difference equal to, you can see reflecting one, X1 plus x2 again x2 so covering how much means it is a 2x2 plus x1 that is distance covered by reflecting one okay minus 
distance traveled by that is direct sound x1 this is x1 that is equal to how much 2x2 and this must be equal to n lambda right now see what happened so now what happened is the cardboard is moved by a distance 20 centimeter it is moved by 20 centimeter let us take this as x where x equal to 20 centimeter you see where change comes coming to the path difference path difference that is equal to now it becomes it becomes 2 into x2 plus x minus check once carefully x1 plus x2 plus x again plus x plus x2 so 2x2 plus 2x plus x1 okay x1 plus x2 plus x again x again x2 so 2x2 plus 2x plus x1 minus x1 so what is the value now x1 x1 gets cancelled it is 2x2 plus 2x you can see here extra path extra path difference is 2 into x right now condition given that intensity changes from maximum to minimum right and that happens if this is equal to if this is equal to n lambda plus lambda by 2 if it is equal to extra lambda by 2 then it becomes distract to interference that means 2x equal to 2x equal to lambda by 2 therefore lambda value 4x 4x means 80 centimeter or you can say 0 0.8 meter okay and we have to calculate now corresponding frequency so frequency f equal to v by lambda v value given 336 and lambda value 0 0.8 okay eight here four times that right that means this answer will be 4 8 32 next is 16 two times it is a 420 h okay ration is that it is changing from maximum to minimum okay that means extra path extra path how much it is 2x if that extra path equal to lambda by 2 it becomes destructive to interference okay I hope you got clarity. Let us go for next problem. Two stereo speakers are separated by a distance of 2.4 meters. Given two stereo speakers as soon as two. Separation 2.4. A person stands at a distance of 3.2 meter directly in front of one of the speakers as, as shown. So here is a person directly in front of one of the speakers. Find the frequencies in the audible range. Means 20 H to 20 kilo H. For which the listener will hear a max, sorry, a minimum sound intensity. Sound intensity minimum, its meaning is it must be distract to interference. So, sound coming from S1 to here, from S2 to here, 
it must be destructed. That means compression of one source, a rare fraction of other source, they, they are superimposed. Right? Then say how we are solving it. Given yes one, yes two. And this separation 3.2 meter and this is given 2.4. That means from S2 to L distance equal to let you see how much 3.2 square of that plus square of this sum of the squares under root. This comes out to be 4 meter, right? So from this we can say here path length is 3.2 and here path length is 4 meter. Therefore, path difference is 4 minus 3.2. That is 0 0.8. Okay, this is a path difference. In the question, they have not mentioned that sources are in phase. So we are taking the assumption that sources are in phase. That means when S1 gives compression, S2 also gives compression. If S1 gives a rare fraction, S2 also gives a rare fraction. So we are taking as it is in phase. Then this path difference equal to N into or it is given this to at minimum. Then this must be equal to 2n minus 1 into lambda by 2. 2n minus 1 into lambda by 2. Then see corresponding lambda value. And we have to find frequencies at frequencies. See frequency will be f equal to v by lambda. Right. f equal to v by lambda that is equal to v value. See the v value how much given? I think v value is given 320 right? The value of v and substitute the value of lambda there. Given it is now 320. Substitute here 320 by lambda value, lambda value 2 into 0 0.8, 1 0.6 by lambda equal to 2 by 0 point, sorry, it is 1 point, it's right. into 1.0.8 so lambda 1.6 by 6 by 2n minus 1 that is now 1.6 here how many times 200 times into 2n minus 1 now we have to put values of n to get frequencies okay so we here we have taken assumption that S1, S2, they are in phase. Suppose if they are out of phase, see how to solve it. So where change comes. If they are out of phase, we are writing 0 0.8 plus since out of phase, phase corresponds to pi, pi corresponds to lambda by 2 plus lambda by 2. That is equal to 2n minus 1 into lambda by 2. Okay. So here you are taking sources are S1, S2 are out of phase. Then 0 0.8 plus lambda by 2 equal to 2n minus 1 into lambda by 2. Here you can write either plus or minus, okay? Anything is okay. 
and here we have taken sources are influence so in the book it is not mentioned and answer is given according to their influence this therefore this is a fan answer right